Hey, what's up everyone? This is Rakesh from motionstreet.com and welcome to the very first tutorial of Adobe Illustrator in the history of this channel. So today we are going to create a retro style typography design and we will also explore some tips, tricks and techniques along the way. And the best thing about these designs are that they never go out of the trend and that's why I love creating these kind of designs. It doesn't matter whether you are a beginner or amateur. This design is for all. So yeah, with that said, let's quickly roll the intro and let's get started. All right, so here we are in Illustrator. Let's create a new artboard and we will call it as creative and the dimension of 1920 by 1080 looks good to me and the units in pixels and the orientation type as landscape mode but if you want to keep it as portrait you can simply click on this icon but for this tutorial i'm going with the landscape mode and if you want to see some other settings also you can simply click on this advanced options and it will show you some more settings which is best to keep the settings as default now simply click on create and then there is the artboard okay so first thing first that i'm working inside this typography workspace because i mostly work inside this one but of course you can work inside any of your choice right the second thing is that we have few colors right here which we will be using throughout the design and we won't be introducing any color other than these six right and the last thing is that we also have a texture that we will be applying at the very end of the design now let's quickly turn it off for a while and now let's quickly proceed with our design. So first of all take the rectangle tool or hit M on your keyboard to select the rectangle and then we will make a rectangle something like this same as the size of our artboard and then take the eyedropper tool or you can simply hit I which is a shortcut on your keyboard and we will pick up the color from this circle like this and then we don't have to work with this layer anymore. So we can of course lock this layer up and before locking let me uh, now tell you something that this blue dot indicates that which layer you have currently selected right so now we can just simply click on it and the layer is now locked and we cannot move this layer or select the layer anymore right and before we proceed further with the design let me tell you that if you want to follow along with this tutorial this entire illustrator file is available to download from the link in the description so make sure to check it out now simply select the text tool and let's type in anything you want so I am typing design and let's increase the font size so go to the properties and we will increase the font size to around 300 or so and for the font I'll go with mustardo which is basically a free font available on the internet or you can also download it from the link in the description now uh, open the paragraph and we will align this into the center and uh, let's decrease the size like this and then align this into the center of our artboard but make sure align to artboard is checked right okay so now this is going to be very interesting because the actual concept of this design will start from here right so simply select the text layer and we will move into this appearance panel and if you don't see this uh, icon right here you can always go to the window and make sure the appearance is checked right now we will apply a new fill just by clicking on this uh, little box right here and then we will duplicate it by dropping on this icon like this and now select the second fill hit I on your keyboard and we will simply pick up this color right here okay but you cannot see this color that we have just picked because we have a black fill onto the top of it and the moment you hide it you will see that it is there right and then select the second fill layer click on fx and go to the distort and transform and we will apply a transform first of all we will enable the preview and increase the number of copies to around let's say 8 and we will move the copies just by one pixel horizontally and vertically like this and if you want to manipulate the number of copies you can do it at any moment but for this uh, now design i'm going to keep it at 8 now we just have to simply duplicate the layer again just by dragging on this icon and select the third fill hit i 
pick up the color from this circle open it click on transform and click on preview again and we will just increase the number of copies something just like this yeah I think 30 looks good and then hit OK again duplicate the fill layer just like this select the color hit I and pick up this color from here and now open up the fill and let's make the room first click on transform and preview and we will increase the number of copies to around 52 just like this and again duplicate the fill layer select the color hit I and pick up this yellow color open the fill click on transform and this time we will keep it to around 85 or so hit ok maybe I should decrease the copies to around 78 yeah and again for the last time create a duplicate and select the color hit I and pick up this color from here and click on transform and this time I'm going with around 100 copies just like this maybe I want to increase this to 110 hit ok now the only thing remaining is to select the top fill hit I and we will pick up the first color just from here like this and there you go the design is now looking really really cool but it is not complete yet because we are going to make it look even more cooler right so simply select the layer hold alt on your keyboard and we will create a copy of it just like this and then open up the appearance panel and we will select all of the uh, fills excluding the first one and we will get rid of all of this by dropping into this bin and then go to the objects objects and click on expand appearance again go to the objects click on expand this time and make sure the objects and fill is checked now hit ok and then open up the pathfinder options and if you don't see this pathfinder right here you can always go to the window and search for the pathfinder and make sure this is enabled right and then click on this unite and now we will be using the hex code of this color from here and copy this code select the design text and then we will use in the strokes and paste it right here and now this time we are going to increase the stroke width to around 3 now you just have to place it exactly onto the top of the text just like this and if you want to work you know um, precisely you can even zoom it and move it with the arrows if you want and I think this is the thing we were actually going for the text is now ready and we are all set to create the background which will take the overall look and feel of the design to the next level okay so let's quickly do it now and before doing it we will select all of our layers on the artboard then go to the objects and we will group it up or you can simply use the shortcut which is Control or command G if you're using Mac okay now click on it go to the layers and we will hide it for a while and also the colors as well just like this and then select the line tool hold shift on your keyboard and then we will simply draw a line something like this and then go to the properties and we will increase the stroke width to around 150 pixels right then go to this drop down and we will select this width profile right and here let me tell you a quick tip which is one of the hidden tricks of Adobe Illustrator and many people might not be aware of now let's suppose that if we want to flip this line vertically right so what are the options available for us to do so the first thing is we can use the rotation like this or we can simply use the reflect options from here which will of course do the same thing right but here is the time saving tip the moment you hold alt on your keyboard and click on this anchor point it flips the line in a fraction of a second and you when you click it again it flips back the line right this is how it works and it will actually save a lot of your time right so now let's move on with the background we were talking about so select the line go to the object and we will click on expand appearance and the moment you click on it the, list, the illustrator will start reading it as a shape not a line right 
Now simply, we just have to rotate by holding shift on the keyboard, something just like this. Now we will put the very bottom of the shape onto the very center of the art, but just like this, we can of course use the arrow keys if we want. Now take the zoom tool and scale this down a little and we will decrease the height of the shape, something like this, and then we will scale this up first and then we will hold alt on your keyboard and increase the width in proportion like this and then I think I need to increase the height just a little like this and then press R on the keyboard to select the rotation tool and we will simply place this anchor point right at the bottom of the shape something like this and then we are not supposed to click anywhere in the space otherwise the rotation technique won't work right so what we have to do is just hold alt on our keyboard and we will drag a copy out of it something just like this and then you just have to you know repeatedly press ctrl or command d on the keyboard in order to create the copies in the same direction just like this okay now we are going to delete the portions of the lines which is outside of the artboard and in order to do so we have to first unlock the background layer now select all of the layers on the artboard now grab the shape builder tool or you can simply hit shift m on the keyboard to select it and then hold alt on your keyboard and drag the cursor over the shapes you want to get rid of like this and there you go Let's bring up the color palettes again and we will use these colors to colorize our background to make the background look colorful, right? So simply select this line and hit I to select the eyedropper tool and we will pick up this color. Now select this one, hit I, pick up the red one, select this one, hit I and you just have to repeat this process again and again, right? And I would suggest to fill the colors in a random order means no two consecutive lines should have the same color but you can of course go with the way you want as it is nothing but just about the creativity, right? And once we are done with the colors, we will simply lock the background, hide the colors and select all of the layers on the artboard, press Ctrl or Command G on our keyboard to group them. Now go to the effects and we will use the twist from warp right then click on it and it will show you some settings and make sure you have you now enable the horizontal and then we will simply drag it this bend amount something like this just the touch i think yeah um, i think i should keep it at 28 okay now Go to the properties and we will make sure the layer is selected first and we will bring down the opacity to around 85% or so. Okay, now go to the layers and we will enable our text and the texture and also select both of them and we will drag it onto the very top of the layers, right? Now if you see that the, the layer, the color of the texture is not very good, so we can simply select the, select the texture and Pick up the color from the background like this and also let's quickly uh, decrease its opacity as well down to around 50% like this and now I think it is still at the bottom put it on the top. The text appears to be too big as of now so we can simply select the layer and hold Control or command shift at the same time and we will simply decrease the text just a little like this yeah now it is looking perfect maybe we can do one more thing that if we rotate the text something like this just a little bit it would still look beautiful right now the last element is to add a circle which is very crucial for this design right so simply go to the uh, rectangle tool and select the ellipse or you can simply hit L on your keyboard to select the same tool now Hold Ctrl or Command Shift at the same time to make a perfect circle like this and then we will simply align this into the center of our artboard. Now go to the properties and we will make the fill to white color like this. 
select the circle again and go to this gradient panel and if you don't see this right here you can of course find it in this window and make sure this is checked right now open the gradient and then click on the type and we will set it to radial now double click on this color and we will pick up the white color now select this one and we will bring down the opacity all the way to zero like this and then we will simply just put it right below the text I think yes there you go and at this point of time our design is now almost ready but it seems like we need to do some adjustment and corrections to achieve the final output right so let's quickly do it so first of all let's select the layer and we will move this by using the arrows little bit up like this yeah and also we will rotate it little more I think this this looks good now yes and now select this background and we will decrease the opacity down to around 70 percent and then the opacity of the texture we will also be decreased by 10 percent now and if you still feel like that my design is looking empty or it has some kind of word in it then you can of course place some text on your design like the way i have done it right here and i think i need to place this onto the top as well right and this is how you can remove this space or the word that you feel right now let me tell you something very beautiful about this design suppose if we want to change or update the text we can do it in a few seconds without touching any other things let me show you how first we will lock all of the layers excluding the text then right click on it click on ungroup and then we will separate the above layer like this and then grab the text tool and this time we are going to type retronix retronix and then we will create a copy of it go to the appearance panel and we will delete all of the fills excluding the first one and then go to the object click on expand appearance object expand once more at ok now go to the pathfinder and unite it now take the eyedropper tool and we will simply capture the properties of this layer and then we just need to place it again onto the top just like this and again just use the arrow right now there you go you just updated the text in just a few clicks right and let's delete this layer so our design is now complete and we just saw the entire concept of how we can create these kind of retro designs and poster in just a few minutes but you can still take your time and add some more details to it it all just depends on our creativity the more you use it the more you will have so yeah that's it for today guys i hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new and if you really did then make sure to hit the like button subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon so that you never miss any creative upcoming tutorial and lastly don't forget to follow me as motion street on instagram and i'll see you in the next video till then keep dreaming keep creating peace out